Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're looking at where you know the cast of The School for Good and Evil from. Now, please excuse me. I have fresh villainy to attend to. Showtime. For this list, we'll be helping to jog your memory and letting you know where it is you've seen many of the actors in the fantasy flick before. Leave us a comment and let us know who you were most excited to see in the movie. Number 12, Rachel Bloom. Good morning, my dear family. <gasps> hey, don't waste that tomato, Sophie! It was supposed to go in the stew! Except for her role in the 2018 film Most Likely to Murder, all of Rachel Bloom's roles in movies prior to The School for Good and Evil have been voice work in animated films. So the likelihood is that she won't be familiar to you via her appearances on the big screen. Any leads on where they might find that? Not right this second, no. However, between 2015 and 2019, Bloom made her mark on the small screen as the co-creator, executive producer, writer, and star of the CW hit Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. It's a role that earned her a Critics' Choice Award and a Golden Globe in 2016. Cause the center of the triangle is Lil Old Sexy Little Baby Number 11, Rob Delaney. Settle down now, boys. Rob Delaney's career hasn't been catastrophic prior to his appearance in The School for Good and Evil, but you might be thinking that because you recognize him from the sitcom Catastrophe. Listen, I wanted to say that I know this wasn't anything serious and it was just a bit of fun. This wasn't serious. No, when, when I say it wasn't serious, I'm goofing you, bro. Delaney was the star, co creator, co writer, and executive producer of the series that ran from 2015 to 2019. And if you don't remember him from that, maybe you have a kid or are just a huge fan of the Home Alone franchise. Delaney was one of the burglars in Disney Plus's Home Sweet Home Alone in 2021. Hey! <laughs> Santa? Is that you? Oh, 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 how are you, little boy? Orange Stripe, Center Pocket. No. <laughs> Number 10, Patti LuPone. If you've gone to a show on Broadway since the mid 70s, there's a good chance you've seen Patti LuPone. She's a true legend of the stage and has three Tony Awards and two Olivier Awards to prove it. Lupone was part of the original London cast of Les Miserables, as well as the revival of Gypsy in 2008. But for those unfamiliar with her work on Broadway, you may recognize her from her many movies and guest roles on television. Excuse me. Hello. <laughs> Jack. Patty LuPone is trying to get your attention. This includes the time she played herself on Will and Grace and her five episode run on Ryan Murphy's FX show Pose. Both came prior to her appearance as bookshop owner Mrs. DeVille in The School for Good and Evil. Any new fairy tales? Nothing you haven't read a thousand times before, Sophie. But I did spot some very interesting older editions in there. Look, look, dig around. Number nine, Peter Serafinowicz. Who are you? I am the gnome of the blue forest. But I thought gnomes were supposed to be short. I thought princesses were supposed to be likable. 23 years before seeing Peter Serafinowicz as Yuba in The School for Good and Evil, you may have seen him in a little movie called Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. Well, you wouldn't have actually seen him in the film as much as heard him as the voice of Darth Maul. At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. So while that's probably the biggest thing he's ever been a part of, it's much more likely that you know Mr. Serafinowicz from his role as the titular Tick in the Amazon series The Tick that aired between 2016 and 2019. Or you could recognize him as Pete from Shaun of the Dead. It's not that taxing, is it? Something on a little scrap of paper. Number eight, Kit Young. Welcome to Never After, my love. Kit Young makes his silver screen debut playing twins Rian and Rafal in The School for Good and Evil, but this film isn't the young actor's first foray into the fantasy realm on Netflix. While the talented British actor has done some theatre on the prestigious London stage, he may look familiar to you because you've spent some time Netflix and chillin' with the first season of Shadow and Bone. I haven't seen you before. Where's Tomo? Oh, don't know. Uh, hey, hey! Was that sign damaged before? Saints. 
Where was I? Young plays Jesper, a member of the Crows on the series that made its debut on the streamer in 2021. I shoot things with style. And I look good. It's just play to my strengths, boss. Number seven, Kate Blanchett. Sophie discovered that books lined the walls, filled with stories from every corner of the world. You know we can hear you narrating, you weirdo. Kate Blanchett is the narrator of The School for Good and Evil. So, in this case, you may be wondering where you've heard her before, rather than seen her. And it's very possible you picked up on her voice as that of Hela's in Thor Ragnarok. Neil, beg your pardon. <laughs> Neil. Before your queen. If we're talking voice performances alone, one could also remember hearing Blanchett as Valka in the two How to Train Your Dragon sequels, as well as the Python Ka in the 2018 film Mowgli Legend of the Jungle. Oh, yeah, and she was also in the Lord of the Rings movies. And to bring everything back around, narrated the prologue as Galadriel in the first film. Things that are. And some things that have not yet come to pass. Number six, Lawrence Fishburne. As were Hercules and Sinbad and El Cid and all the others who have battled the forces of evil, we teach you how to fulfill your destiny. Watching Lawrence Fishburne decide the fate of new arrivals to the School for Good and Evil is kind of like watching Morpheus guide Neo's journey into the Matrix. Or maybe it just feels that way because Fishburne was Morpheus. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. And just like he tends to the students as the schoolmaster, Fishburne tends to pigeons as the Bowery King in the John Wick films. His role as head of the school also, in a way, shared some similarities with Dr. Raymond Langston, a CSI Level 2 investigator who was known to take charge and even taught a course. Fishburne played the role between 2008 to 2011 on CSI Crime Scene Investigation. According to Vice, the going price is 10 grand. That's a serious investment. Number five, Kerry Washington. I see you found the groom room. Well done, Agatha of Gavaldon. Might I suggest you clean up a bit before orientation? Or perhaps clean up a lot? We have to imagine that playing Professor Clarissa Dovey, the Dean of Good in the School for Good and Evil, is a nice change for Washington after being a part of so much evil on Scandal for six years. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But you have to try. Because if you try, if you leap, and you try, and it doesn't work out, it's not on you. Along with her popular run as Olivia Pope on the hit ABC show, Washington has also been a part of a few other things you might know her from. This includes her turn as Broomhilda Von Shaft in Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained, and Mia Warren in Little Fires Everywhere, a TV series that she also executive produced. I thought we were friends. White women always want to be friends with their maid. I was not your maid, Elena, and I was never your friend. Number four, Michelle Yeoh. A lady's smile is a sword in the battle for life and true love. The School for Good and Evil is a fantasy film, which suits Michelle Yeoh perfectly since she's been doing fantastical things on screen for over 30 years now. In the Netflix film, Yo plays Professor Emma Anemone, who teaches a class in beautification. Hey, I was the head of the magical history department long before you got here, Red. You were? Yes, before this place became insufferably shallow and I was demoted to beautification. Mm. Yo herself is a bit of an expert at doing beautiful things in movies, especially when it comes to stunts, which she is famous for doing many herself from her early work in Hong Kong action films to the exhilarating airborne choreography of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And age hasn't slowed her down either. Yo turned 60 in 2022, but you wouldn't know it watching her in Everything Everywhere all at once. Is he dead? <sighs> See, not dead, go. Number three, Sophia Ann Caruso. What is this all about? This? Turns out you did me a favor. I was long overdue for a makeover. Now, if 
you wouldn't mind activating my powers, I'd be most grateful. To theatergoers, Sofia Ann Caruso is recognizable as the actress who originated the role of Lydia Dietz in the Beetlejuice musical on Broadway. I want something to This was a role she inhabited from March 2019 through February 2020. Dealing with the ghoul Beetlejuice might have been Caruso's first major experience with evil in her work life, but it wouldn't be her last. In fact, even before landing the juicy role of Sophie, the good girl turned bad in The School for Good and Evil, she appeared in a 2019 episode of the supernatural drama Evil on CBS. La, 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 la. Ladies, we need you to stop. Number two, Charlize Theron. I'm the dean of the school for evil. Does that suggest anything to you? To pinpoint where you know Charlize Theron from is very hard. Only because she's been one of the biggest movie stars in the world for the last couple of decades. Almost 20 years before becoming dean and teacher of fantasy evil Lady Lesso, Theron took home an Oscar for her portrayal of earthly evil in Monster. Then, about 10 years prior to playing Lesso, Theron tested her fantasy chops as Snow White's evil stepmother Queen Ravenna in Snow White and the Huntsman. I will never stop. Never. I will give this wretched world the queen it deserves. There's also a good chance you know Theron from about a million magazine covers and or numerous other films, including Mad Max Fury Road. I am one of the Bumalini! Of the many mothers! My initiate mother was KD Concanon! I am the daughter of Mary Jobasa! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Sophia Wiley. Excuse me, milady, I believe. Uh... That I don't belong here? Yeah, I know. Knowing your stupid rose anyway. Oh, and by the way, this is what a normal girl looks like. Maybe you're having a hard time recognizing Sophia Wiley because The School for Good and Evil is on Netflix and you're so used to seeing her on a Disney service. Before she found herself at this fantasy school being trained for good, she spent a couple years at middle school with her best friend Andy Mack on the Disney Channel. Literally the best thing ever. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Savage. Savage. <laughs> when do you think you'll take off the training wheels? And since 2019, she's been singing and dancing at a fictional East High School putting on a production of High School Musical The Musical in High School Musical The Musical The Series on Disney+. Plus. My mom always says that if you can't be number one at something, it isn't worth doing. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.